so this is the entrance to Naz Chaz Trace Wilderness Preserve Thousand Trails off of Napier Road in Hohenwald, Tennessee. And this is where you register. They have this section over here. Which used to be a parking lot for the beach. <laughs> yeah, which used to be a parking lot. They, now they've got full hookups for us bigger boys. That's our new neighbors. That's Tom and Kim in their Phaeton. There we are with our flags. And their entrance and our entrance are facing each other, so we've been having happy hours together. We are at the junkyard, junkyard dog steakhouse in Hohenwald, as Dave calls it, Hole in the Wall, Tennessee. What'd you get? Yep. We got. Well, I got country fried steak, mashed potatoes, and sautéed onions. And what do you think? What? Homemade potatoes, huh? Mm-hmm. I got the French dip. French dip. French dip with the sweet potato fries. And pickle. Very good. Just a few miles from the RV resort is Naz Chaz Trace Parkway. And there are several trails and historical sites that you can stop and see. Gorgeous day out here on Natchez Trace Parkway. Fine, the weather is cooperating in the 70s. Unfortunately, we won't be here for only a few more days. Along this road, they have several of these historical markers. Yeah. So there's like three of them, I think, along here, isn't there? Yeah. And then you can just make the turn to the left and check it out. We are at the Meriwether Lewis State Park in Hohenwald, Tennessee, and we Hole were in hole in the wall. And they um, um, just decided to just take a little trip through the park here, and I'm going to show you a little bit. This is Pioneer Cemetery. Apparently, this is where Meriwether Lewis is buried. 1774 to 1809. The dust of Meriwether Lewis, a captain of the United States Army, private secretary to President Jefferson, senior commander of the Lewis and Clark Expedition, and governor of the territory of Louisiana. Charlotte, Virginia, August 18, 1774. Died October 11th. 1809. Age of 35. Yep. So this is the old grinder house, and this is the site and ruins of the grinder house in which Meriwether Lewis met his death on the night of October 11th, 1809. The Natchez Trace played an important role in its service to the American military. General Andrew Jackson's troops traveled the Natchez Trace to engage the British during the War of 1812. So to think that military soldiers traveled through here. Pretty cool. This is Steele's Ironworks. 
here about 1820 stood a charcoal burning furnace used to manufacture pig iron. All that remain of this pioneer enterprise are a slag pile and the evidence of a mill race used to bring water from Buffalo River to operate the furnace's air blasting machinery. Let's, let's go down here and take a look. There's a, a five minute stroll beyond the uh, Metal Fords loads you besides the Buffalo River to the McLiff Stand exhibit. This is the entrance into another historical site off of the Natchez Parkway. And this is called Metal Ford. And we're going to see what it looks like. Very pretty getting to it. So this is Buffalo River. Got some good water running through there. There's a trail goes right up along the river there. Be fun to canoe. Tube. Buddy who was traveling from Chicago? Yeah. To New Orleans. New Orleans. What are you gonna do when you get at New Orleans? Party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay back. Yeah, we'll let our hair down, kick our heels up. So you've been on the road for how many days now? I guess 11. 11. Yeah. 11 days? Took three and days off. So, total. so from Chicago now in here in Tennessee, so you're about halfway? Not quite halfway, right? Collinwood will be halfway. Right. Awesome. Yeah, and it's all going. Where do you stay at night? Uh, tonight they got to set up well on Collinwood. They got a firehouse and it's got shower access. And they said if it's oh, raining, man, we these guys are shitting in high cotton tonight. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Rest of the time we've been camping out or staying with friends. Ah. Awesome. Right. Well, wish you a lot of luck and hope oh. you enjoy your journey. Well, hope you. the weather gets better for you. This is an old mining pit. Mm -hmm. hmm. wonder why they chopped all the trees down. I don't know. Because they're all cut. It's too bad you can't go down in there. Check out the mine. Rain lately down here in Tennessee. So everything is running good. That'd be a nice sound to have next to your tent site, your camp site. Pretty, huh? Yeah. Even has trout. Oh, really? Yeah, little ones. There's as little ones as big ones. The river goes on for a long ways. So this is a picture of Karen and I at Jack Daniels Distillery outside the uh, visitor center in this huge rocking chair. And there's another picture of Karen and I entering into the uh, uh, visitor center at the Jack Daniels Distillery. And that's us after we've purchased our tickets for the tour at the Jack Daniels Distillery. And another picture of the Jack Daniels visitor center at the distillery. And of the grounds beautiful grounds they keep it up wonderful and there's all the different tours you can take of the distillery we took the flight of jack tour yeah for 20 bucks 20 dollars and there's a picture of the old man himself jack daniels at the age of what 35 and of course there's a single uh, Single Barrel Select Tennessee Whiskey, Jack Daniels. And this uh, comes from the upper floors where it gets the darkest colors. Right. And when people want to buy the single barrels, they're getting, what is it, like 100, over 100 cases? Like 129 cases to a barrel. And they get their name on the bottle, their name on the barrel. They get, they get the barrel, the bottle, <laughs> everything, lock, stock, and barrel. Ha, ha, ha. ha. Uh, that's where they got that from. Yeah. 
and also they get to sample the different barrels before they make their decision right. to spend all that big money, which is what do they think they said like ten to fifteen thousand dollars? Ten to fifteen thousand dollars a barrel. But that was actually a savings if you do it by the fifth. Right. Comes out to about thirteen bucks a fifth. Then you'd also would get your name put on a plaque. Inside the Which I didn't see many names, I saw mostly companies. Yeah. And um, you'd get a little barrel each time you bought a barrel. Mm -hmm. So these are all little individual barrels there. And that's uh, just a, a quick overview of the dis distillation process where they start with the milling of the, the uh, grain and then they the fermenting of the grain, then the distilling of the grain, the filtering of the, of the uh, alcohol takes out all the impurities and all that and then putting it in the, the barrel to make whiskey. And that's a picture of the grains. It's corn, barley, and rye. And that's it. Is it like 80% corn? 80, yeah, about 80% corn, 10% barley, and 10% rye. Something to, like that. To make corn, to make, to make, uh, yeah. The regular, the regular whiskey. Whiskey. Yep. Now to make rye whiskey, it's 80% rye, 10% corn, and 10% barley. And that's a photo of the uh, of the mash. After they add the yeast to the everything, and it gets this what they call a mash cake on it. It actually looks like cornbread floating on it. Mm -hmm. And it kind of smells like it too. <laughs> a little stronger than that. Yeah, a little stronger than <laughs> that. But and after it's uh, distilled. And then the alcohol is fed in through these copper pipes over these great big towers of charcoal. And it just drips down that, char that tower of charcoal to filter out all the, all the nasties in it. So you just end up with good old fashioned moonshine. And once that happens, then they put the moonshine in a, in a barrel that's been, an oak barrel that's been charred on the inside. And they build all their own barrels, and they only use them once. And so they put all the uh, moonshine, if you want to call it, into that barrel and let it age. And that's what makes the whiskey. Gives it that color and the taste and all that is in that oak barrel. And that's one of their warehouses that they, uh, they stack these things in. It's like seven floors tall. Well, what they're showing is that the the lower is where it's cooler, and you get your a little warmer in the middle, and then it goes a little, it gets hotter at the top, A, B, and C. Right. And the lower is the clearer, and then it gets darker yeah. depending the, on the heat. Yeah, so, how how high it sits up in the warehouse determines on how dark the whiskey gets. And that's where the select comes from. Was from the upper. Yeah, the select comes from the up, upper tiers. And this is actually one we that's saw. Actual warehouse right there. They had, I don't know, like 12, 12, of them, them, 12 yeah. of them or something right there on site. I can't recall how many barrels they have there at any given time, but... Uh, over a million barrels. Yeah. And they mix them all together to get the number seven most popular yeah, bought. Yeah, most popular yeah. bought. And there's where they have a big bonfire is actually they're burning sugar maple to make the charcoal. And they make all their own charcoal, cut all their own sugar maple, and they season the sugar maple. You see it stacked up in the background to a certain age before before they'll burn it. A certain height and quantity. Yeah. It's very specific before yeah. they burn it. And there's the underground spring at Jack Daniels where all the water comes from. That's all they make. That's all the only kind of water they use is from that spring. And there's the, the guy on the left, he's Jack Daniels. <laughs> Who's the guy on the right? The guy on the right's the guy that works there. He, no, he's our tour guide. He's our tour guide. And there's the first office of Jack Daniels, the office building, and there's the inside. And there's a little story that goes with that. In that room sits a safe, and Jack Daniels came in there on the weekend, I think it was a Sunday, to do some bookkeeping or what have you, and he couldn't get the safe open so he kicked it and he broke his toe and when he broke his toe it wouldn't heal up so he eventually got gangrene and died of it and there's a picture of the distillery itself the towers where the 
that's the mash part where they, the big tankers where they heat it up and make the mash and actually distill it. All the trees and buildings and everything around there, they're black. And what it is, it's uh, like the amino acids let loose from the, uh, the yeast. When they add the yeast to the tankers, it turns everything black. And it was within a, a four mile four mile uh, radius as we were driving away from it we could still see all the black on the trees real dark black on the trees and they say that's how they used to catch moonshiners in the woods the feds because they'd start seeing the trees are all black so they knew it still was close by Ready for this? Absolutely. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> They're awfully small cups. <laughs> Stick your hand. Stick your hand. Now, I don't know where all your hands have been. The reason I did that, we've been out there in the world, there's all the smells up there. If you smell your own hand, no one else is saying that resets your nose. So between each of the five we're gonna try, I'm gonna want you to stick your hand to reset your nose. Also, if you'd like, don't drink a lot, but sip some water, splash it on your tongue, cleanse your palate. 